Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. I'm Calvin. Thank you so much for stopping by, especially my new viewers and new subscribers. Your kindness, your generosity, your support of my channel has truly been amazing, and I never take that for granted. I'm a 57-year-old American who grew tired of the rat race and decided, you know what, I'm going to pack it all up and move to the Philippines in search of a new life. Well, I found that new life, and I want to share with you my boots on the ground experiences the only way I know how. And that's by giving you the nitty gritty. It's exactly what I'm seeing, what I'm living, what I'm experiencing. Now we're going to sugarcoat it. It's not going to start today. Uh, the subject of my vlog today is don't ask too many questions in the Philippines. It's none of your business. It's not going to make any sense anyway. Ever since I started coming over here in 2009, it's not a day goes by that I don't see something, I experience something, that makes me scratch my head and say, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it's not supposed to make sense. It's never going to make sense. And it's still real life over here. This is literally East meets West thinking over here. Well, before I get started, I'm getting a late, late start on my vlog today because we had to travel to Victoria's Negros Occidental about three and a half hours away to do the paperwork to get the title of the land that I bought transferred over into her name and my daughter's name. It's a tedious process. We sat there for two hours, stack of paperwork. We still have to pay 18,000 pesos. Okay, then bring it back here uh, with two certified copies, proof that we paid the 18,000. They're gonna do the transfer and when the new title's ready, come back again to pick up the title. It doesn't make sense. But it doesn't have to make sense, guys. I'm in the Philippines. Uh, we're two and a half, no, we're about 45 minutes away from Lackawan Island. So we're going to spend a couple of days there. I told you guys, I'm going to try to take you around to the Philippines as much as I can. Movement is very, very limited here. This isn't America in, in those different places. I mean, it takes a court order to go any place, but as long as I'm in my region, I can go places. Lackawanna Island is in, considered Negros Occidental. Beautiful, beautiful place. It's sort of like the Maldives of the Philippines. And you'll see, I'm going to do my live from there. I'll do a video vlog from there tomorrow. Um, I'm going to bring y'all along with me. But before I start on my subject, I want to talk about foolish pride in the Philippines because I think this is important that you understand what you're gonna run into when you get over here. Filipinos are very, very proud. I mean, they're just a proud uh, people. But sometimes their pride can be foolish pride. What is foolish pride? Well, it's just when you think you're too good or you're too embarrassed to accept help. Uh, you know, my mother used to say that to us when we were little, don't let your foolish pride get in the way of you asking for help are accepting him, see? Uh, and here's how it's gonna go something like this. You're gonna hire somebody, or you may give a tip to the pedicab driver or the waiter or somebody like that, but this is my personal experience. Our maintenance man came over about two weeks ago. He put up a curtain rod in the hallway to block the air so that uh, the living room would get cooler faster with the air condition. He was only there 30 minutes. I tried to give him 200 pesos. And of course, he started this song and dance, which is the foolish pride over here, which you're gonna have to sit through uh, every single time, just about when you try to give somebody help or give them a few extra dollars or something. And he, oh, that's okay, you don't have to do it, that's too much, blah, blah. I just sat there like, okay, I know this song and dance. I've been over here for 12 years. After about a minute and a half of doing that, he finally gave in, took the money, put it in his pocket, turned around and left. It happens over and over again. It's a song and dance. You're going to have to uh, be able to live through it and tolerate it. Same with her mother. Her mother quit. And I'm sorry to see her mother go. She's a great worker. But for some reason she quit. I guess, you know, the baby was too much. But every single Friday when I paid her, here would be the situation. I'd come up with the money, she said, oh, what's this? And I'd have to sit through that song and dance for about a minute and a half when she, you know, pretending she doesn't know what I'm doing. Lady, this is your paycheck that I give you every single week. Please take it so I can go back in here and drink my coffee. 
it's like that all the time. Remember I told you about the, the young lady, the young pregnant mother on the bus. I'm going to Bacala. She didn't have enough money for the oranges. I buy the oranges. I get it. I'm a stranger. But still, young lady, you starving. Take these oranges. She went through the song and dance. See, had I not sat through it a million times, I would have did what I did at home if I tried to give somebody some help. And they said, oh, it's okay, man. I, you know, I just, okay, all right. But over in the Philippines, you recognize that. It's foolish pride. You know you need this money. Go ahead and take it. But they don't want, they're full of pride. They don't want you to think they need help. They don't want you giving them anything. You understand? They're embarrassed. But you're starving over here. You need that. So that's the type of foolish pride you're going to endure over here. Get ready for it, guys. It's no big deal. Just, you know, you're going to have to sacrifice a minute of your time. Now to my subject today about, you know, don't ask too many questions over here. It's not your business, and it's not going to make sense in, to you anyway. Uh, and the first time I ever encountered that, I was on Sikuho Island, the beach. As a matter of fact, their public beach, which is one of the nicest public beaches in all of the Philippines, I guarantee you. They call it Little Barakai, but hell, any white sand beach <laughs> that's not Barakai, they call it Little Barakai. And I'm there, and as I am all the time, and I'm seeing all of these foreign men and their wives. And I'm thinking, why would you bring your wife to the Philippines? Who brings their wife to the Philippines? You know, it doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, I never really thought about it. It's just something that went through my mind. They were literally, because they were on the beach, bringing sand to the beach. And, you know, I just thought to myself, this doesn't make sense at all. And I could literally make three or four videos just on this stuff, guys. It's going to have you scratching your head. Going crazy, but that's why I'm letting you in on it. So you don't have to go crazy like I did. When you see something, just okay, be like, okay, man, you know, I'm in the Philippines, you know. This is East versus West over here. You're thinking, <laughs> you can't bring, it doesn't work over here. All right, I'll give you another example. All right, according to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, the Philippines is the 32nd richest country in the world, on the planet their economy, but yet you see staggering poverty over here that you as a Westerner can't wrap your mind around it. And you're like, it doesn't make sense. They've got the fastest growing economy in all of Asia. Why are so many people starving over here? Well, it doesn't make sense to you. It's never going to make sense, and it doesn't have to make sense for it to be reality here in the Philippines. But this is the type of stuff you're going to see when you get over here. You're going to see crazy stuff like this. Okay, you have to have a college degree to work in Jollibee, Child King, and different places like that. The Pancake House. And you think to yourself, why in the world would you spend all that money to go to college? You know, literally your parents' life savings because education is very, very important to Filipinos. And they'll spend their whole life savings to send their kids to college. And then you get out and that's the only job you got. You know, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. But it makes great sense over here. It just doesn't make sense to you. I was riding my bike the other day, and on the, you know, I, I got a certain tra tra trail that I go every day religiously. And I go past the school, and on this particular day, there's a line of tricycles out there waiting for people, you know, the school to get out so that the teachers, because the teachers still go to school over here. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you wait? They wait there for hours to get their chance for a customer. Now, remember I told you before, you can go anywhere in the city proper in San Carlos for 10 pesos. They will literally wait there for two or three hours for their turn to drive a customer home for 10 pesos. And you say, it doesn't make sense. Why in the world would you spend all that time in line, why don't you go around town trying to pick up some customers that way? But you sit here all day in line waiting for one customer. But it makes good sense to them. You know, because I'm going to tell you something. This is not going to make sense to you. It still doesn't make sense to me. Some tricycle drivers, pedicab drivers, 
street vendors. They work all day and don't earn one peso. By the time they pay their boundary, by the time they pay the street vendor, he has to pay his interest payment to the boom buy, to the Indian that comes around for the 5-6, that does the 5-6 loan. All his profit goes to the interest, to the boom buy. So he's worked all day for nothing, no profit, and they do it day after day after day, and you say, man, why in the world would you do that? That doesn't make sense. But it makes absolute sense sense to them over here all right listen to this one thing that's going to shock you when you get over here you've never been over here before and i'm sure you've heard about it before there's certain filipinos who bleach their skin to become white but guess what they become literally white they don't understand that even white people aren't that white they look crazy man it looks spooky i'm gonna tell you something the only thing that would look weirder th than that to me was, was if I saw a black Chinese over here. That would freak me out, man. That's how strange it looks. But it doesn't have to make sense to you. See, it kind of reminds me of when uh, I was growing up and the stories my mother used to tell me. See, my mother was fair-skinned and her mother, my grandma used to pass for white to get jobs. See? But anyway, she would talk about the, the whitening creams that black people used to use. The line they hair to make their hair straight so they can look more European. You know, so they could fit in and get jobs and stuff like that. We did it in our community. I get it over here why they do it, but it's not the reason why you think they do it. You know, but it looks foolish. It looks crazy, you know, to see a white Filipino. I'm not talking about the ones whose lineage comes down from the Europeans, you know, and, and they're they're literally Europeans. They're, I mean, from the Spanish, they're literally Europeans. I'm talking about regular Filipinos. They inject this stuff, uh, glutathione. They take the pills. They spend all of their hard-earned money. Money's hard to come by over here. And we're not talking about just the rich and famous. We're talking about the average, everyday Filipino over here. Bleaches themselves, spends their whole money to do it, and you think it doesn't make sense. You should be using that money to eat. Don't you realize you live in a tropical uh, uh, climate? That the temperature never gets cold over here? You know, but hey, it's not supposed to make sense to me for it to be reality in the Philippines. But yeah, it's strange when you first see it, guys, because their elbows and their knees are still going to be, you can't bleach that. Okay, it just looks it just looks strange to me, but it's their business. They can do it if they want to. I'll give you another one, and this is strange to me. It's hot over here. It's hot, hot, especially now. Okay, but you're gonna see Filipinos with long sleeve sweatshirts, hooded sweatshirts, and they're gonna cinch it all the way, and all you're gonna see is this on their face. And it's super, super hot, and you're going to wonder, that don't make sense. Why are you wearing that? It's the poor man's umbrella, basically what it is. They're trying to hide themselves from the sun, you know, not realizing that you need the rays from the sun. There's certain nutrients and everything, the life-sustaining sun. You don't want to hide from the sun, but it's so, so hot, you wonder, like, why would you go through all of that? I'd rather just let the sun hit my skin than to put all of that on. But they do it, man, and it doesn't make sense. But it's not supposed to make sense, and it's never going to make sense to you for it to be real life here in the Philippines, man. And I could go on and on, but I just want to let you know, when you come over here and you see some of this strange stuff over here, some of the houses that they live in, and you think to yourself, why doesn't the government help these people? It's none of your business. Just keep on going. Don't ask any questions over here. It's none of your business. It's not going to make sense because you're in the Philippines. So thank you so much for stopping by today. If you're in America, it's early on your way to work. Get your paper. Get your coffee. You see somebody in the street, buy them something to eat. Buy them something to drink. In the Philippines, it's already late. I hope you help somebody. There's no excuse for you not to have helped somebody today. There's literally millions of people over here who need our help. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure. We help other people, we help ourselves, 
Take care. Stay safe. Stay COVID free. I'll see you next time. I had no choice but to do this horizontal uh, video today, and I'm sorry, okay? They all have Wi-Fi at the resort. I'll be able to do the panoram panoramic like I've been doing lately, but hey, I'm doing the best I can, guys. Take care. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.